And welcome to the Blue Monday podcast covering Ipswich Town since 2015. I'm Richard Woodward and you're tuned into a special podcast episode talking all things Football Manager 2022. Blue Monday podcast covering Football Manager since 2022. I should say. Um, joining me tonight from our own podcast team, but here with his ITFC researcher hat on, it's Joe Fairs. And we're delighted to have a special guest, um, Head of EFL Research, Dean Gripton. Dean, we'll start with you. How are you doing? Panic over. You can relax for oh, all but a few weeks, I'm sure now. Yes, yes, it's right. Yes, uh, obviously the game was released on um, yesterday the 9th and uh, well, it actually was available for everyone with Steam um, on the 8th at 8pm. So yes, it's a sort of relief when it comes out, but then obviously we've got one eye on people reporting bugs and mistakes and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's sort of never... It never finishes, really. No, it's like the fourth row bridge, isn't it? Yeah, um, actually, the relief was when we have our, what we call our data lock, which was when the data is finally closed off. No more changes can be made. But even then, we're still sort of, you know, internally checking other things and making sure there isn't anything, you know, that that, that needs changing. So, yeah, and then a little bit of play testing the game and helping the guys out with that. And then but there's always reality that always kicks in and tries to make life difficult. We will talk about that and all sorts. So this is a general um, chat on Football Manager, but obviously Joe is joining us because Joe is the, the researcher. Is that is that the right title for you, Joe? Um, evening to you as well. Hello to you. Um, and is the, is the feedback you're receiving from town fans so far even-handed? Any offensive comments so far? Or do people just not know that it's you they need to complain about when Macaulay Bond's finishing stats aren't high enough? <laughs> I think they know it's me because I, I normally receive a few notes through it and sort of people send me DMs. And most people are generally pretty helpful about stuff and sort of ge- genuinely asking questions on it. So I haven't had too much sort of negative feedback yet. Um, I think Macaulay Bond is one that's been picked up as having his finishing too low. But I I sort of complete, not me on that one, it's the sort of the QPR and the Charlton researchers that have watched him sort of week in, week out for the last... <clears throat> A few years who sort of know him better than me. So I've been quite lucky this year with such a new squad. I haven't actually had that much to do for once because generally it's sort of left, almost almost left as they were by their previous researchers who've had the benefit of watching them a lot. So I just updated my file, sent sent Luke Chambers, Cole Skews, Freddie Sears and all those guys away to their new clubs and then just saw the new ones come in. Oh, you felt like Paul Cook, I'm sure, you know, waving goodbye to those guys. So we'll, we'll talk about, um, we will talk about um, Joe and Ipswich Town because it's been a crazy summer and kind of an unprecedented amount of change. And interesting to understand from both of your perspectives how that kind of situation plays out and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing um, and the kind of challenges around that. Dean, let's start with with, with your role with the game. You're the head of EFL research, so presumably you've got 72 versions yes, of Joe right, yeah. all yeah. playing with the database. Tell us about that and, and any challenges around that. Well, um, the big challenges are when researchers, you know, obviously we, we, we ask them to do a lot of work all at the same sort of time. So there's a lot of work coming into me all at the same time of year. Um, usually we're looking at uh, big updates in the winter, uh, for our winter update, but also we look at uh, we ask all the researchers to look at everything at the end of the season. So um, obviously at the end of the season, where we've been able to evaluate how well a, a club has done, we have uh, some interesting uh, algorithms uh, set up to us by um, one of our head researchers, the Turkish head researcher, who's worked with a lot of um, um, odds uh, from betting companies to establish. Uh, the level how teams are expected to perform against each other within the division wow. and uh, from there on we can look at um, how the current ability of all the players in a squad should be relative to other clubs in their division and we sort of start working from it from there really wow i mean it's it's an amazing evolution if you rewind yes, 20 is. years I'm, i mean i'm of the vintage of champ man 0102 and all that kind of stuff i love that game and plow through 
seasons at university on that like you know in a few days you know statues outside swindon's ground and all that kind of stuff is this a challenge for you now in, in respect of your research is because there's a lot of sophistication involved it'd be interesting to understand a little bit about that but are, 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 analytics and data is obviously massive in the game now is that have you seen that evolution is that a challenge for you now losing folks to that that industry Yes, yes, that is that has made a big change for us. But um, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, yeah, the recalculation we've had to establish how well teams are doing against each other isn't just a, isn't just a case of trying to mirror the league table and say they were the top team, they've got the best players, they were the bottom team, they've got the worst players, because uh, obviously throughout the season form fluctuates and there are injuries and that sort of thing. So that's why we use the um, they use an average of a, n- a number of betting companies. Um, odds for matches to establish an expected points. Obviously, expected goals is an uh, is a, is an analytic now that people are used to. Will we look at an expected points model to help us ascertain which were the stronger teams in the division? Yep, and uh, and whether teams and whether teams then reach that reach the levels they were expected to in the division, and then look at rating the players from there on. So, factoring a real life example, then so for two years. Yes. Ipswich Town fans have watched um, us be highly rated by neutrals and, mm. and the bookies to an extent as well, but I know there were structural flaws. So it'd be interesting to understand because because Joe, presumably you were you were reflecting, I guess, what a lot of supporters were seeing and and weren't necessarily big on us, or or maybe did that was that a little bit of a journey that you went on in terms of updating the database, and then how much of the how much of the external algorithms drag that around guys do you want to start joe with 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 your perspective on that yeah well i've because i've been doing it since probably about 2013 2014 so this was at the stage where we had a squad sort of with mick mccarthy that was finishing sixth seventh in the championship and every every time i had an update period come through it's like ipswich is ranked 18th in the league so i needed to <clears throat> set my squad up around that parameter which i I just find it a little bit difficult at the start, but I could understand the reason because I did feel we were punching above our weight as a squad. And But it did mean that when Paul Hurst came in and everything went badly wrong, I didn't have to amend the players too much because we were still ranked sort of similar to where we'd been under McCarthy. But from there, it's, it's just bit, I think the difficulty that I've had in the last couple of years is just the sheer size of the squad and how many players are sort of first team players effectively and there, there isn't really anyone to bring the average down a bit so much because our the 20th best player in our squad is sort of had been a lot a lot more superior to the 20th best player in sort of comparative league one squads because they just didn't have the yeah. depth and it that's, that's made it difficult but I've always a couple of times I've gone over it. I think in the last one I was under what I needed to be because I just didn't feel we deserved to be what the ratings were so I've always had to argue a case sometimes if I've needed to, but I've never really had any big problems getting to the numbers. And, uh, sorry, go on, Dean. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, like I said, he's trying to hit the numbers. Well, this is this is where we have a current ability for a player is re- and um, obviously related to the squad that he's in, but also then within the division as well. So, um, a player like uh, Macaulay Bond will have been rated for his performances in when he's played in the championship obviously he drops down into the into league one but he still can be rated as a league one player as a sort of championship player that's that's okay that's that makes it a challenge further down the line when we have to assess how well Ipswich have done over the season and whether you finish you know obviously if you finish our table it does make it slightly easy for you but um yeah, if you have another if you have another poor season and finish in the middle of the table again god forbid then um it could Poor well Joe. be that some of these players are a little bit overrated. Yeah, it's fascinating that, and, and it's yeah. certainly new new to me <laughs> as, as an outsider to this. I mean, Dean, talk to you've got as you said, you've got seventy two guys in the EFL. How much of how much is is that now a community and, and folk comparing notes, or or do each um, each of the guys have an individual way of doing things? How much how much is is kind of prescribed by um, you guys? How much of is uh, there's obviously a table, a database to complete, but process and so on. Talk to us about that. Uh, but a big part of the process, I hope Joe thinks it's something we're quite good at, is communicating what we want uh, to everybody. Um, obviously, my emails, my inbox is always full with uh, in, ins and outs talking to the, each individual club researcher. Uh, some are obviously 
as you always get with when you're working with 72 different people, some are better than others. And uh, please report that Joe is one of the more reliable ones, oh, Joe. <laughs> which is why he's been doing it for seven or eight years because, uh, because, it, because he's very good at doing it and very reliable. And, and also because he doesn't look at things with too much rose tinted glasses. We do, we do like it when people have an opinion. That's, that's a good thing. It is a good thing for people to go out and say, Hey, look, you know, we, I really think this player is better than, playing for this squad, playing for my team. He should be at a better level. We're happy to look at players at that level, but obviously not all of the players are, you yeah. know, you, you could, Joe couldn't come around, turn around and say, I've got 12 players here who are capable of playing for the teams in the top six in the championship because, because if they were, they'd be... That's they wouldn't be here. So, yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't be in Ipswich. Yeah. <laughs> and, and has there been that negotiation, my words, mm. that negotiation, that discussion on... When there's a, there's a view that there's a player here that that's exceptional and and, and merits a higher level of, of yeah. stats. Have you have you encountered that situation, Joe and Dean together? And can you can you talk us through that? And if you haven't, Dean, can you maybe do it from your perspective? Has there been an instance like that, Joe? I, I, I can't think of any one off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm sure we have at some point in the past. Surely not Armando Dobra. I, I think it, I, I actually think the one. It, my opinion was for David McGoldrick. I, I wanted to keep him rated quite highly, but he was having a lot of injury problems. And I was sort of saying, well, if he fit, he is still a star player for us. So he was one that sort of, I sort of able was able to keep his rating quite high on the game, yeah, but sort yeah. of keeping his injury proneness up to sort of try and mirror real life as opposed to just sort of bringing him down just to try and fit him within the guidelines. So from your perspective, Dean, is it? What what are you looking for from the likes of Joe to justify that position, and and what do you do behind the scenes to kind of verify that and make a decision on it? Well, yeah, what what I have to do behind the scenes is sort of devour as much information as I can about all the clubs in the division from as many different sources as possible. So I'm on top of who who are the main performers at each club. So you know, I I I don't want to see any surprises in the database, and I invariably don't because. I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be on top of, of everything, really. So, so that helps me try and keep in touch with it. But of course, there is so much to to watch. I cannot watch every game for every club because they just aren't the hours in the day. So, this is where you know we need people like Joe in here because Joe does watch every game. Yeah, it does, and every academy or well, a lot of academy games as well. And is there any? I guess it's it's it, hmm. it is what it is, really. If you pick a team like Ipswich, which has got which has, has previously had very big roster, to use an American term, and an academy. Is it just too bad for Joe that he's happened to grow up as an Ipswich fan and have 60-odd players perhaps to consider versus someone who's got a smaller smaller club with a... Is there anything that's, that, that compensates or deals with that disparity or is it just too bad? Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, obviously, the, there are a couple of clubs in League 2 and in, and in, in League 1 who don't have youth teams, so... You know that those researchers have got fewer players to look at, but yes, it is a difficult situation for you know Joe and uh, I think Ipswich have probably got the biggest squad in the in the in League One in terms of the amount of players they've got. I know they've got players with squad numbers in the fifties, haven't they? Yeah. So yeah, and a lot of young players. So yeah, yeah, it, there are there are a lot of them. Some of them are out on loan, obviously, and they get assessed by the researchers at the loan clubs. But generally, you know, there are a lot of young players. You just have to keep on top of, and that's that's probably quite difficult for you. Um, I guess do you use um, do you use something like a squad depth chart when you're planning uh, how to rate the under twenty threes? Um, I'd, I'd like to say I was that organised, but generally it's just a case of <laughs> yeah. flicking through it, putting the ratings in as I think about yeah. it as I go through it, and then looking at it sort of on the comparisons tools to make sure that it looks somewhere like I want it to. The, the challenge I've had this year, and we were lucky that we had the sort of run to the Youth Cup semi-final last year, which saw a lot of our games televised or streamed or what it was that I was able to watch it just because simply we can't get across to the training ground. But I, I know probably a lot of researchers can't ever get across to a training ground to watch them. So I probably have an advantage that I can see some of the games at least. But And that was very difficult last season. To... I'm sorry. Yeah. So I can say that was very difficult last season. Obviously, COVID and everything was people couldn't go and see those games. So, you know, we were having to be lenient with people saying, you know, I understand why you haven't rated last season's first year scholars at your club, et cetera, et cetera, to people because they just hadn't had the opportunity to see them play. So, 
And we, we, still have, we, we still have that at Ipswich this year, and I think it will be for most of the season, which is a shame. So you, you end up having to sort of trust the coaches in a, in a sense that if there's a first year who's consistently playing for the under-23s, you know that he's probably the best player in the current intake. So you have to sort of use a bit of common sense in that yes, in yes. that regard. But And is there a burden, I guess, not wishing to kind of make comparisons between your researchers, Dean, but... Is 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 there a point where there's a there's a there's a level of research that you accept is either it becomes a full time job and I assume a lot of the guys doing it is it's a, it's an extra thing it's an extra <clears throat> thing so for academy players is there a lot of it just produced and and algorithms by the game rather than necessarily relying on the researchers or is there a, a reliance on the researcher to give you a number even if it is maybe a kind of a finger in the air type situation. We, we yeah we we do encourage we do encourage uh, research. Obviously, I, it's it's down to me to know what the researchers are and what their relationship with the club is and how much they know about the club, sort of thing. And we clearly try to get the best person we can for each club. But uh, in some instances, I'd just say to them, you know, we'll leave their abilities all blank and let the game create create profiles for players depending on what roles they play and what their positions are. So. Um, Obviously, a 16-year-old goalkeeper who's a first-year scholar, you may not have seen play, but the game will obviously create him as a goalkeeper. That's um, and and then for a defender, you might set someone as a central defender, which might mean you he'll, he'll get given attributes which are more fitting for a central defender than they would be for a central midfielder sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. The, so you might so not the, rate, and the game attributes, will, but yeah, and the game will position. then assess those depending on um, on a figure which we. Um, which you call our new gen rating figure, which is a figure we create for every club, which um, is down to the, the youth rating, with, whether they're cat one to cat four, and also um, how how good a how good a club they are in terms of uh, their youth training, the training facilities, and the reputation of the club, etc. So, yes, yeah, so so that Ipswich should be creating better young players in the game which come through in the first year, you know, and the new gens, which are the players that are created later in the in the game, their their youth play should be better than um should be better than South Ends, for example. Sure. Well, that's fast that's because of, because so of the great. size of the club. So yeah. So yeah. we do have that that facility to create um uh, to create players to fit certain roles. That's that's something we've added to the database in the last couple of years. So that uh, if you know somebody is a fast winger, you can set you can set their pace as being a generic fast sort of rating and um, and ally that with their position, which, you know, you, you put down as a ring or you put them inside forward or that sort of thing will create a profile which looks right for a player in that position. And as, as the interaction with the clubs, and it'll be interesting to get Joe's thoughts mm. on that, change and evolve, because I know a lot of clubs use this as a scouting tool now don't they the database is so sophisticated and the the quality of the research has got to a point now where clubs are using it as a scouting tool are, are the are clubs as clubs starting to reach out to you guys to improve this process or is it all kind of arm's length still it is it is more at arm's length than we are I, I do uh, mention to researchers, you know, we don't want them contacting the club asking for inf information. Okay, that's no not calling, no calling that's parents. Not what, that that's kind of not stuff. what we're here for. Yeah, what, what <laughs> we're here for. We're not, you know, because clubs aren't going to going to give information about anybody out anyway. And it, a lot of this stuff should be something you can find anyway. Okay, so yeah. and is that your yeah. experience as well, Joe? Do you do they give you a nice seat? Sometimes maybe I don't know, you know, because you're not getting access. There's a bubble around um, Playford Road. No, yeah, you know no, that, access, so you're not getting no, VIP access, are you? No, I've never been able to sort of get a decent contact at the club for things. Even sort of, I've tried to pull some strings from other things there previously. It's, it's, it's never quite worked out. Sort of gentle, sort of asking of them. So you just have to get the information whichever way you can. There's sort of ways and means of finding things out and speaking to people and getting it from we there have, and yeah. like I say, and some people you just hit a brick wall with and you just have to go with there but you normally find a few helpful people that are able to sort of help mainly this year's been tough because like i said they we haven't as a club we haven't even announced who the scholars are as a club so it's difficult to know who's even there effectively i think i think i've got everyone but a few weeks back i thought a guy that was playing for the under 18s i thought he was still a schoolboy and under 16 and then all of a sudden i realized I tweeted on the academy account, oh, schoolboy scored a hat trick. And they're like, oh, no, he's a first year scholar. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, 
crap, I need to find out all his details and get it sent over to make sure that he's in the game. Otherwise, he's going to miss out. And I'm sure a lot of them want to see themselves in the game as well. So, I was going to say, do you get feedback from from pros? Um, and we know that they play the game, Dean, because they're always on socials, on the bus to the game and stuff like that. Have you had, have either of you had an experience of, of that, Joe? Start with you. No? Um, a, a couple of times where they sort of said, oh, what was my rate for this? But I, it tends to be, I think the younger players seem are more into like FIFA because they talk yes. about wanting like a 99 rating for something. They want a 90 for this and stuff. So it seems they're more FIFA, but I'd imagine they'll learn. It wouldn't surprise me if FIFA nicks some of the sort of FIFA Ipswich research. I wouldn't be surprised if they're nicking bits <laughs> from the stuff that I found. Do yeah, we do. Yeah, back? we do. Uh, yeah, we do. Um, Miles Jacobs from the studio. Uh, director, he sends out um, a copy of the, uh, the alpha version of the game, which is a uh, the version of the game which we're in development, usually in August, September, out to footballers and to staff at clubs, and uh, they often feed back with a little bit of inf- information about themselves. You know, uh, it's usually little things like you know ask, asking to be a little bit better, but also the non the non players usually say, "Oh, you've got so and so's date of birth wrong," or or that sort of thing. But sometimes we've had to guess those because. They're not available, like you said. You know, the, uh, Joe wasn't able to find some of the Ipswich personal data for the young players, and then other clubs are amazing. Other clubs' websites have, you know, Lincoln City's website has loads of stuff on their scholars when it comes out, and they introduce them. and There's a news article explaining who they all are when they come out in June, and that makes it easy for that researcher to do to get a basic profile for those players out. And the then flight. other clubs, oh. there's yeah, there's another club in the in league one which is quite a big club which doesn't have anything on their under 18s whatsoever doesn't have any names of any players or any match reports anything have and you got a big whatsapp group guys you where you're all <laughs> are you all comparing that kind of stuff or is there anything like that no There's no no, no we don't no we we don't have I, I i have asked i have asked whether i have asked the group um whether they wanted to do that but uh i think that would probably be a little bit too noisy noisy and intrusive and yeah yeah, haven't really had many people said they wanted to do that so maybe uh maybe they don't want they've had enough of me on email never mind whatsapp i think you probably know more than they do paralysis of analysis can't it sometimes when you're just you just end up looking so far into the weeds isn't it there yes should we talk about fm22 then we talked about the, the general process um and that and fascinating stuff there and and as a player so so brilliant to know the kind of the rich amount of data that's going into this. If I am, um, let me see if I can add the marketing video into the background there and keep it on mute. Um, was there any changes this year in terms of features and functionality that has changed the process for either of you guys, or certainly for you, Dean, but also for Joe, or has it been relatively straightforward in that respect and it's business as usual? Yeah, for me, it's been, I'd say, with a little bit behind the curtainy, but it's sort of the, it's been a big change in the, and sort of how we send our data in effectively so it's more just been getting more used to that as opposed to as opposed to anything else indeed yes yeah we we've uh we've got onto a system in the last 18 months where the database is online that uh the researchers can access it anytime they like which uh it never used to be the case before we used to have to email files to each other and then they would amend them and then they'd send them back and then i would then ask them to re-amend them or make changes, et cetera, like that. And it was a little bit, yeah, that was just how it worked at the time. But now we've we've got it all online, which means that Joe and all the other researchers can access it anytime they like, which is really helpful because I know I'm 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 sure I'm sure this is how you, how you probably operate. If you find something out about somebody, you can just pop online, open a submission on there, and make the change and submit it, and then it's it's made instantly. So. So is it yes. is there a case? Sorry, Joe, go on. Yeah, so on that side, like normally I'd have to sort of have notes of everything that mm-hmm. happens sort of, and then I'd get my file and then I'd update it all and send it back off where now, for example, last night, Idris El Mazzini signs a new contract. I'll probably go on sort of later this evening or tomorrow, just update that contract and it's done and then I can forget about it there rather than have all these scribbled notes around and <laughs> that side of it. So hopefully it should make things more accurate. I'm sure. I'm sure mm-hmm. I'll still miss some things, but being able to do things as and when they happen is quite handy. And is there any new features this year? Either of you, I, I assume you both 
play the game as well. <laughs> I guess you have to. Um, any features, new features for FM22 that you're excited about that you want to tell folk about? I've, I've yeah. enjoyed so far sort of the data analysis features on there. It's, yeah, I like there's a lot of the, um, it's, it seems, it's, it's been on previous ones, but it's not something I've really ever seen that much use in. It's always been a bit harder to find, but now after every game, at the end of every month, you're having the, the analysis of your squad, where, where you're stronger, where you're weaker. And I haven't really worked out, the problem I've got at the moment is I'm doing a, a youth academy challenge, so I'm not making any signings. So I, c- I can see all this analysis, but I can't actually sign anyone to go out and improve it. So I have to, adjust from there but no that that does seem that's sort of a bit of a data nerd is that is really good on there and interesting and helps you really think about stuff yeah hopefully that analysis makes you can make you understand where you're making mistakes and getting not getting the results you want and maybe amend your tactics to you know uh, according to the data that you're getting from the data hub which which is that which is one of our big new features in the game there's a lot more um analysis of pass uh you know, uh, passing and you know all sorts of different things that uh, that you can go on and uh, analyze how well you you know all the data that was in the background in the game is now available for people to assess you know how well they've done and which where they've made mistakes tactically and that sort of thing. So that is those, a, that is a yeah. big one. Yeah. It's all those graphs that you see on these Twitter yeah. accounts, isn't it? There where you yeah, see the analytics, yeah. graphs yeah. split up. They sort of all come across there, which I'm sure people will be quite familiar with those. Yes, and, and, and all these features do take a long time to develop. You know, XG only went in the game last year because we wanted to create our own model of XG. But also, you know, it does take a long time to build those models and to make sure it works and to test it and and that sort of thing in the game. So that's uh, yeah, and and the data hub as well is one of those things which was nearly ready for last year, but we weren't happy with it. So we had another twelve months to you know really develop it properly and, and make it how we wanted it to be rather than rush it through that's how we like to operate now instead of yeah. rushing features in to make sure they're right and wait until they're in i can just hear folk on the xg yeah, saying yeah. i've seen so many 3d match engines where the guy should score and he hits the post so hopefully your xg doesn't factor that kind of brain fart moments in front by <laughs> forwards um, any other features that you guys want to draw attention to or any um tips as well I guess that the, you've advocated for the data, and I've really enjoyed. I've enjoyed seeing my team plotted against the norm for the league, um, and I'm very good on the attack unless I'm the defending, which is, I guess, not important when you're top of the league and unbeaten like I was until I lost the penalty. Um, to yeah, Portsmouth, you mentioned but... you mentioned you mentioned earlier about um, uh, about Macaulay Bonds finishing. People were saying it wasn't rated highly enough. I think people can sometimes look at individual. Um, items of data like that and maybe fixate a little bit too much on them where you should be concentrating on the overall profile of a player that would that would be my tip in terms of in in terms of the data uh, just focusing on on, on bond then joe because he's yeah. obviously yours now or is he has he got a recall to january we didn't really get to the bottom of that but he'll still be mine even in january even <laughs> if he goes mine. back i'll be rating him on what i've seen to send him back with so is he is he shifting at all in your assessments at the moment? I haven't really, to be, to be honest, I haven't paid a huge amount of attention to the players like that. It will be something sort of in the next couple of months I'll look to start to pick up as to where their sort of strengths and weaknesses are. But I'd imagine if he carries it on the form he's in and he's got 16, 17 goals by then, he'll be going back <laughs> with an upgrade because he's coming off the back of a sort of QPR season where he struggled and I'm sure his rating's not as high as it, could be if he does carry on the sort of insane form he's in. Yeah, you've got a number of really interesting players, actually. You know, obviously, so many signings in the mm. in the season, and um, some of them have been a little bit in and out of the side. You know, Scott Fraser came with a massive reputation from MK Dons, and he was rated as <coughs> one of the best players in League One, which he was last season. At MK Dons, he was, you know, outstanding in the, in a team which had the most possession throughout the season in that league, and he was their main playmaker. Um, how yeah, do you feel? He, how do you feel he's performed in the Ipswich shirt? He, he's he's done okay, hasn't he? He, he? he, I don't think he's really suited to any of the roles in the team at the moment. And he played last night at the Papa John's Trophy as a sort of a deep lying midfielder, sort of in the two there. And I think he did he did okay there. But he's, I think he talks about how he played as a sort of a number eight at MK Don, sort of on that left hand side and able to get up and down the pitch. But he's. Just simply, he's not the fulcrum of our team like he was at MK Dons. He's, there's not the reliance on him to create everything. And 
I say when everyone's fit, I don't I don't think many people would put them in the in the sort of starting eleven when everyone's fit. I'd imagine. Well, I, I certainly would. The sort of front three, you're going to have like Wes Burns or Sonny Aluka on the right, and probably a combination of either Burst and Selena, Connor Chaplin and Kyle Edwards across the other two positions. So it's a tough one for him to get into. The January it, that's an amazing, interesting. amazing amount of depth you've got in the squad there. Mm. Mm. So I, I know I, for, I, what the one player I, I did look at is, is rated very highly is Vashlav Hladki as well, who came in very highly rated yeah. and has been well poor really hasn't he for us this year and just looks a bag of nerves even even last night sort of we drew he passed the ball straight to their striker with an open goal with 10 seconds left and luckily he sort of managed to yeah. pull his shot wide when he should have scored really shouldn't he rich and um it's just uh it's like i say I, I don't want to go too harsh on him because he was obviously very highly rated by the salford researcher and had been and a listen, goal the researcher year. before that, yes, yeah, yeah but he's going to struggle to keep that rating up from what I've seen of him so yeah. far. And of course, these are the intangibles which you can, which are really hard to replicate. You know how well a, a player can do amazingly at one club, and then come in and make a poor start somewhere else, and and it's difficult for them, you know, to recover. And, that, and that's part of the process yeah. here because it's worth yeah. talking about. I was going to ask you generally about you know getting the game ready to go and and locking down the database and then Newcastle takeovers happen and Eddie Howe gets appointed <laughs> and all that kind of stuff must be, must be giving people kittens at side games. But, but Joe, the season, we talked about this at the start of Ipswich, massive influx and outgoings as well. Um, Dean, can you talk about that process? Cause um, it's a difficult one because I, I assume that Joe doesn't get a huge amount of say on, on for the, for the release, but January will be his first opportunity. Will it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, he could. I mean, I mean, clearly, if if a player was um was incorrectly rated, he, he could identify that in September and October. We 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 could change that, but we yeah, we are careful not to have too many knee jerk reactions. But of course, you know, of course that can that it can happen that a player comes in and and really steps up. Yeah, I think you know, an example I'm, I'm thinking, I had last I'm thinking, year. Yeah. So I had because I had Mark McGuinness come to me last year, and he'd obviously still been rated as effectively an under eighteen for mm. Arsenal, and his rating would have seen him sit probably in our under 18s But it's like, well, no, he needs to come up about yeah. forty yeah. points effectively to just yeah. pick up his position in the squad. And I remember when we signed Tyrone Mings from Chippenham all those years ago, and he managed to get a big upgrade as soon as we signed him purely because he'd been signed by a Championship club when he was playing at level seven. He just couldn't have had the ratings at that level, which. Otherwise, he'd have just been the best player in the league by such a distance, and it would have been, it just wouldn't have worked. So there's, there are a couple of examples I've had on that. Yeah, they are with with the Mings thing. Now we we are sort of trying to encourage certainly the non league researchers to really emphasise who those players are in the in the league, the ones who really are going to try and step up. So uh, yeah, we. But of course, you know, it's the proof is when a player plays because you know had had Mings come in from chipping, I'm sure players have gone in. Championship and League One teams making those steps and haven't worked out and ended up back where they started and ended up back where they started. So yeah, the proof is as as was for McGuinness. You know they come in and play and then we can reassess them when they've proved what they can do at a better level. Because of course, with a player like McGuinness, the you know the most crucial spell of his career in terms of you know his development was that time at Ipswich. And now he's at Cardiff and we're able to you know see a lot more about a player as they play more often. Is it fair to say the January update is probably more important than the than the database? Is it the release? Is it is that fair to say? Because you, you you're right, you know, the, avoiding the need jerk reactions on certain players yeah. is an important thing. Obviously, some time has elapsed as well, and Joe's got some understanding of players that have come in. Um, but real world stuff has happened: derby points, deductions, all that kind of stuff, and then more transfers. So, is, is for you guys is January the more the the one that you want to get right, or is it the game release one? Oh, the game release one is is the big is the real okay. biggie because so many people will you know they'll turn on their they'll turn on their laptops, load up their game, and they'll instantly you know they'll instantly point out you know so so and so is not better than him, and so and so is better than him, and all that, and you, you get all the hot air around you know all the big clubs and all that sort of thing. So yeah, we really do need to get that one correct. There's not as many people download the January update. Because they're already in the middle of their saves, right? But, uh, okay. but a lot of people do like to start a save again. Obviously, if if um, Ipswich were to make 
seven or eight new signings and to sign really exciting players and were top of the league, people would then want to go, oh, I want to play as Ipswich with these new players. You know, Is without it, the, the ones they've got rid of, we don't want those in the squad. I want all the new ones we play yeah. and said so they start again. So that does that does then create a little bit of a problem for us in this, you know, and anal- analysing how well a team does over a whole season, because of course, then you're playing forty six games with Ipswich with their new signings instead of who they've had all season, sort of thing. Yeah, it, oh, it's, it's so fast. Is, is the workload <laughs> bigger in the in the January update, or is it still the summer? Do you think? The summer is the summer is the really big one. Yeah, the workload is absolutely massive because it's not. Uh, there's so many other things we need to get in the database, the kits, and you know, I'm, I'm sure we can talk about. There's a there was an issue with the kit, wasn't there? With the oh, kit, with exciting the kits, bit with the kits. A yeah, little, just, a, bit, a bit of excitement with that. Yes, is that because that wasn't Joe presumably because he Joe wouldn't have known that, or did he get to design a third kit? Is, is all <laughs> of the other apart from so Joe's responsible for the players' stats? Yes, is everything yeah. else the game? Is well, you yeah, a, a lot of it. Um, a lot of it. I, I, I overlooked the, the kits in particular this year because I, I get the EFL handbook, which has all the official kits in, which has okay. all the official colours and the designs and that sort of thing in. So I, I, I tell the researcher, you know, leave the kits alone. I'll make sure they're the right colours, you know, and the right design sort of thing. So that so, we match, so was that so that we match that the, the assets. EFL handbook yes. then? It was, yes. It was in the EFL yeah. handbook. So that's exciting. And, uh, yeah, and we were, um, and it was approved. We have we have licensing meetings with the EFL, and that was approved. As were all the other. There was a couple of other clubs which the third kits weren't yet revealed, but that was allowed. I suppose so, it Wigan who sort of then announced it off the back of yeah. it being in there. I noticed. Yeah. Oh, there you go. The exclusives <laughs> for all the all the extra stuff. So, is it right that Joe's just responsible for player stats, even coaches and manager stats, and all that? Oh stuff yeah, coaches right? manager stats as well. Oh, in particular, the coaches is a really is a really big one. We do ask the researchers to make sure that you know the, um, the managers have got their current tactics in, and uh, it, it's not just a case of setting four four two or four three two one or whatever. They they can set certain styles of play so that it matches whether they're a Gagan Press and um, or a park the bus or the control possession, all those options you get in FM the, the, in the game for you to set in your own tactics are options that Joe can set for Paul Cook. Four, two, three, so one, rep, wing so the FM <laughs> when so that when FM plays a zip switch for other people, it looks like a Paul Cook Ipswich team. And then so, yes, characteristics so, yeah. of their yeah. sort of tendencies of. Yeah. Yeah. Resting players for cup games, signing from certain markets, playing more young players. So it tries to replicate what will happen with Ipswich going forwards. And and what sort of players, again, the roles they play, because roles are more important now in FM than the old positions. You know, um, obviously, you're going to have players like uh, George Emerson plays a centre back. But we're more interested in what type of centre back is he? Is he a yeah. ball playing centre back? Is he a no nonsense centre back? Will he dribble the ball out? what role will he play within the team it's that sort of thing so uh, yeah those will be set as well in the manager tactics brilliant got a couple of questions i I think we've dealt with a load of stuff here which has been fascinating so thank you so much um will really enjoying fm22 so far particularly the extra data views there you go another advocate for that um question for joe how hard was it to gauge the quality of the players squad given the big turner i think we've dealt with that but any other thoughts on on that one joe yeah, I, I think my challenge is going to be in January just to try and sort of rejig the squad effectively so that the players who are better are rated better. Because we've obviously signed players from higher, like Sam Morsey has come from a good championship side in Middlesbrough. So who, he'd have been rated as a starter for them because that's what he was. And then we've signed players like well, like Joe Piggott, for example, who obviously did well, but was at AFC Wimbledon, a lower League One side. So it's just making sure that the the players that have stepped up from lower levels are rated as highly as those who have stepped down from the higher levels and whether that's bringing people down or putting people up, that's what I'd have to work out yeah. there. And like I was mentioned with the keepers, obviously Haladki now I'm going to say he's, he's probably going to come down relatively significantly in January. And cause I don't see that Walton is Walton is what he is. And I think where he was rated is probably right. And it's just, how it's gone around that, but I don't want to sort of, you can't just nerf someone as they call it, just, just because they've had a poor few games. You have to think about it there, but it is, yeah, it's, it's just a case of trying to rejig the squad so that those who are starting regularly are rated more highly than those who are struggling to get the team ahead of them. 
So not and of course, there's of course sorry. another couple of months. So you know, form can fluctuate wildly mm. in the next couple of yeah. months as it has done the last two months. So yeah, it's very oh. easy just to dive in after. So sort of, Macaulay Bond's obviously got ten, eleven goals now in fifteen games. But if in January he's got thirteen goals in thirty games, then he's not going to sort of probably be rated as highly as if I were to do him now. So it's probably worth having that whole sort of first half of the season to reflect on. Take the emotion out of it, Joe. But Hladke is a really good example, and I don't want to pick on him, the poor guy. So, um, but he's obviously, as you said, Dean, had been rated highly at Samir and, and Salford. And to Joe's point, the observation that I think all town fans would make is it's it's less his attributes and more perhaps his mentality, perhaps, and yeah. the nerves. Is that something that Joe can adjust? Is that is that possible too? So you keep his attributes largely the same. You maybe do a little bit of a downward adjustment if he has really played or has made some bad errors. But if it's a psychological thing, can can that be factored in? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the mental side of the game is factored into his current ability. So uh, his decision making, his um, um, and and yeah, and other mental attributes like that, his consistency, his concentration levels, those can all be uh, adjusted. So that's probably to reflect is that it. Yes, yeah. Where you'd go, Joe? Maybe just. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, because he because he'd been so good at Salford, and when I when he came across from Salford, I did speak to their researcher a, a fair bit back and forth. It might be something I'd go back to him with just to get his view on certain areas rather than just dive straight into it. I mean, it was accepted not just by the Salford researcher, who is who is a very good researcher and really knows what he's what he's doing, but uh, it uh, you know it's accepted within football. You know, he won he was in the league two team of the season last season golden gloves and like i said when you see the stats from salford he was unbelievable and i I, I spoke to a lot of people it was like you've signed the best keeper outside the championship this is a guy that should be going to a championship side not a league one side and it was seen as a real coup and we paid good money for him so i think it was about three hundred thousand you've paid for a goalkeeper which is almost unheard of and for for a way it is unheard of for a league one side to spend that sort of money on a goalkeeper so it is it's definitely uh for, for some reason, it's just not worked out, but it's not to say he isn't a good keeper because he obviously is. Hmm. We'll find out. Um, Pablo Canuga, does marking the goalkeeper with your top striker still yield 60 plus <laughs> goals? I think that's a, I'm not sure that's a question, but um, maybe in the old game. Um, finally, Flim Flam film fan, um, loves football manager, been playing since Chat Mondays, embraced the huge levels of immersion as they've been added, but worried the game's accessibility to new players. I think, I think. That's been addressed a little bit. It's a little bit easier. But the question is, does Dean think a new mode starting as an academy manager and learning manager and working through it, getting coaching badges and going up the ladder might be possible in future iterations? You also ask, will there ever be a stadium it, editor available? That's that's Premier Manager 98. Um, but um, yeah, the thought about working the way up through the... Through the... It, it does it does get mentioned quite a lot in the forums and it is something we, we, are, we do discuss quite regularly. I think the one thing, the one thing which is a, it sounds exciting in principle, but actually, how much would there be to do if you were the under eighteen manager? I'm not sure people would enjoy doing it because you obviously wouldn't have transfers to do, and you probably wouldn't have tactics to do because you'd be told the tactics by the, either the director of football or the manager of the first team. So I'm not sure how much there would be to do, and whether that would be something which you would soon get tired of the novelty of that would soon wear out i don't know any it it is it it is something that uh is under consideration as a feature but uh but that's all at the moment okay that's interesting yeah sometimes i find it interesting to set up a sort of like a director of football save where you just Mm. hand everything over and you just have the first team but that doesn't always work as well as you want it to and you still have to adjust the budgets for them to work there so i'm sure all this stuff has been considered and tested and looked at and and to the nth degree before it would ever come live. Yes, yeah. and and you are able to you know uh, to delegate a lot of the roles if you don't want to to other members of your FM staff. If you're playing the game, if you don't want to do the press conference, you don't have to. You can send your assistant manager. You can, you know, you can get uh, you can ask your coach to do the training. All of these sorts of things you don't have to do if you don't want to. So that does reduce some of the uh, some of the workload. But then, of course, you know, other people like to. Do all of it. Do all of it. The, the full immersion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just for, finally, guys, um, talk to us about your saves at the moment and what you, you know, Joe, you talked about your academy save. Um, Dean, have you got a game going on, a save going on at the moment that you're, what's your aspirations? 
Uh, well, I'm only just I'm only just starting uh, a little bit of a save, really, because uh, I've been so busy. I wasn't able to do any play testing or do any do a save before the game was out. So, um, yeah, I started I started to save as unemployed, and st- on the first game, I opened it up and you know see what who's available. And the Latvian league is a new league in the game, and one of their teams, Riga, were second in the league with twelve games to go. So I thought I'll. Uh, I applied for that and got it. So I thought, well, I'll do that, play that part of the, play the end of that season with them and then take it from there, really. Wow. So I've just started. As that. I've only played four or five games there. So just started that safe. You're, you're a Blues fan, aren't you? You're a Birmingham City fan, am, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Do you do, do, you do that? Do you, do you try I, and get I, to the I top? rarely play in England just because I'm always, if I do, I'd just be looking at, oh, that's not quite right. Or he didn't do that. <laughs> or I'd be too concentrated. I'd be too, too much looking at what the other, it'd what be the work other team rather doing, than play. And it would be. So I do like to go into, I do like usually every year to try and play in a different league where I don't know the data and I actually, actually play the game for what it is rather than worrying too much about, oh, maybe he should have a bit more of a rating as a left back as well as a left, winger or whatever all that sort of thing i just think right i'll play the data i've got to learn who these players are whichever club i'm at say say the club in latvia now i've got just trust the data because our researchers from all over the world there's some amazing um research teams we've got and uh, they're really you know got a a large number of uh, people all helping out as joe does and uh, yeah so i'll just go and play in latvia trust trust the data and you know, try and work out which of these four strikers I've got to play is going to be the one I play up front. I've got to work it out for myself because I don't have any, you know, any prejudiced ideas yeah. about who they are. I've got to work it out myself, and then I'll win, win or fail depending oh. on on my own ability in the game. So yeah, so I do quite enjoy going in in a totally different country. A purist experience. I'm loving that. <laughs> That's great. There you go. Um, and and I guess um, on behalf of as a as the as the as the muggle here, as a player, and I know you guys are players as well. But um, thank you for all the hours. It must be hours and hours of hard work that you guys do, and obviously all of the software engineering and the development and stuff like that. The guys that um, it's, it's Star Games, isn't it? And uh, yeah. thank you. I mean, it, it, it ruined my degree, frankly, but that was a previous era, so it's too late now. I can't, I need to take some responsibility for that. But thank you so much, and. Um, and I'm smashing it at the moment at Ipswich and um, long may that continue. Um, so, yeah. Well, I have to say thank you on behalf of SI to Joe for the amount of work he's done um, on the Ipswich data. That's all the way through the summer. And um, even after the pre-release beta was out um, three or four weeks ago, I was still on to him and we discussed uh, some of the uh, staff responsibilities and uh, updated those for the release. So there's still, you know, there's a lot of work we did we've done all the way through the summer just to ensure all the little elements yeah. of data, they all add I'm, up to be one big picture. Yes. Yeah, so I was just, I was just thinking about not having much to do on the player side. Uh, there was a huge amount of to do to do on the staff side of it, all the new staff setting those up, bring those into the game and sort of totally overhauling it there. And hopefully how it's set up is reflects how it goes, but it's a little we'll sort of be a little bit of a suck them and see because we don't quite know how it's going to work yet so hope, hopefully it all works out as it should do otherwise be more changes in january and and you're always learning as well we went to a fans q a dean on on monday and paul cook told us what francis jeffers coaches and and there was someone else as well francis jeffers does defensive set piece training so that's is that on your yeah. list joe no, but I might need to adjust his coaching stats around that side of it, sort of defensive go. coaching as opposed to. That's interesting. Jeff is on the defensive side because, of yeah. course, you know, we all Gary know he's Roberts a striker. He, so, yeah. Yeah. Gary, Gary Roberts, Roberts does the attacking set pieces and Francis yeah. Jeffers does the defensive. And Paul well, Cook got, does everything else. Well, of course, Gary had a good spell at Ipswich, doesn't he? And, of course, he had that left foot for delivering free kicks and corners. Which yeah. Was, yeah. He's the right man for the job. So, um, so yeah, so Joe's got a oh, – you both have – a busy few months coming up and then and then it'll be around it'll be fm23 will be coming around before you know it. um guys thank you so much again um on behalf of the podcast dean thank you so much for joining us um and giving us those fascinating insights um where can we find you on social media or do you do, would you rather people keep their feedback <laughs> themselves 
Uh, yeah, I'm on I'm on social media at Dean Gripton. There you go. Go and find Dean there. And but, um... uh, if if the, if people want to feed back to the games, we're um, the SI Community Forums has uh, all sorts of areas where you can discuss the game. You can uh, feedback on what you think, how good you think the game is or isn't, or you can feedback on the data. Um, you can request any new features there, um, or just discuss your own save game. All sorts of things. So that's so com. Uh, yes, yes, via SI Dame sigames.com and then uh, click on forums and you go to the uh, to the forums where thousands of people discuss the game fantastic a big community and we and joe everyone knows where you're on twitter um yeah joe fares if you want to complain um no don't um give joe your admiration because he's <laughs> he's watching closely every week um and when he's allowed to the academy games as well so joe thank you for doing all you uh, on behalf of the Ipswich community, I guess, um, for making all your hard work as well. Um, I'm always happy to hear the sort of feedback and bits that people want changed and to look at. Secret insights as well, maybe as well, you know? Yeah. That's so lucky because I've been doing it a long time now. I sort of have a lot of contacts and people I speak to in there, but yeah, anyone, anyone who feels they can add and that's how the staff, anyone watching that can help in any way. I'm always happy to hear from anyone. And I say, I'm glad that, like Ipswich is a sort of manageable size club, I'd imagine, if you're an Arsenal or, or like I say, I remember I used to enjoy on database release day checking out the Arsenal data issues forum and the Man United one to see seven pages bef- before the game had even been out an hour of underrating players and somebody's pay should be 14, not 13. And hundreds and hundreds of pages of issues where Ipswich, I'd be lucky if I had more than sort of two or three comments on there. Well, there you go. He's, uh, he's asking for it, guys. There you go. Um, it- Thank you, everyone, for watching. If you're not a user on the Blue Monday podcast, um, I put up the, um, our web address there. If you want to find out more, bluemondayitfc.co.uk. Thank you for joining us. And um, and I guess um, I guess the final words from all of us is is enjoy playing the game, right, guys? Yeah, it's it's why you do it. Thank Get you. Involved. Get involved. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah.